beautiful lights. I am your host, Kimberly Barrett. Welcome to the Sharing Love and Light Show, Vibration and Consciousness on the Planet. I am a psychic medium, quantum energy healer, and intuitive coach here to help you experience light and love. On this show, I will help you tap into your personal power and shift your energy so you can step into your life's purpose and manifest your dreams. I believe that love is not a verb, it is a state of being. Stay with me for the next hour and unlock the quantum energy gifts that are already in you. You're listening to the Sharing Love and Light Show starting now. Hello, beautiful lights. Kimberly Barrett here, your host tonight on Sharing Love and Light, Consciousness and Vibration on the Planet. I am so grateful to be your host. We are currently on Facebook Live on the first and third Thursdays of the month on Transformation Talk Radio. We're also here um, projecting out off of transformationtalkradio.com. So if you're listening, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're watching Facebook Live, if you can please comment and like and subscribe if you feel moved to do so. So welcome to all you beautiful lights who are out there listening. If you're watching this right now, um, we are so grateful to have you. And I have a wonderful special guest with us today. We are going to talk about living in a human body as spirit, the challenges and rewards of being spirit, having this human experience and She is a champion of women's spirituality. She was born clairvoyant and merged with an unnameable God in 2017 during a near-death experience, which clarified her journey. She is the creator of Divining Women and also has a BA in creative writing, cultural anthropology, and she's published in so many different places, including Folio, Literary Journal, Dance Magazine, and more. So Welcome, Susan Dyer. Hi. Hi, Kim. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm so, so excited to have you on here. And and this topic, man, what, what a great topic to have tonight. And especially with everything that's going on right now, having, you know, all of that stuff going on over in Ukraine and Russia and, you know, the things that have been going on in the world lately, to be living a spirit in a human body. So talk to me about where this topic came from, the challenges and rewards of being spirit, having a human experience. Yeah, this topic came directly from my personal experience and it was so powerful. I almost died again in 2020. And I was having a disconnect between my nerves. So essentially I was passing out and like hitting my face on the counter before I hit the ground or opening the freezer and then just just passing out. My kids were finding me like this and I looked like I had been battered and bruised and the kids didn't even want um didn't want me to go uh in the car um in the car with me and so um this situation i i didn't know what it was but it got worse and worse to the point where i really was unconscious almost the entire time my parents had moved in uh, and were taking care of the kids. And I also had searing, searing nerve pain. And so I went to my meditation room and I, you know, I actually told you this before and I Mm -hmm. laughed because it was the first time that I had channeled source. 
and I had gotten a straightforward answer. <laughs> <laughs> what was the answer from source that day? So I, my question was, how much longer do I have to do this? If I know there's an end date, I can do it. I can make it. And to my complete astonishment, he answered, give me 60 days. And I almost fell off my meditation pillow. I had <laughs> never, ever been answered like that before in my life. And I've been meditating for over 20 years. And what happened was I marked 60 days on my calendar. And each day I got worse, worse and worse and worse and worse. And um, I had an agreement with Source, which is called Golden Keying. And that is a practice by Emmett Fox, who is a deceased spiritual leader. But he wrote many essays, very practical, uh, about um, helping us get by. And golden king means whenever the troublesome topic comes up, you move your thoughts immediately to God. And like I told you, I was getting worse. And about two weeks out, I was visited by the spirit of Julie Garland, who is one Oh, of wow. That's really interesting, right? Yeah. And so just to remind my listeners that you are a medium and you also channel spirits. And so you were asking for questions, you were asking them to come in. You do that also on your Facebook group, right? Is that you'll offer channelings and, and call in different spirits in your, and so Julie Garland, who had a tough life, we all, you know, many of us know Julie Garland, the actress and, and all that she went through. Exactly. And she came in while I was on the couch specifically to say, and I, I will not quote her directly because she definitely swore, um, but she said, you are not golden king like your life depends on it. And at first I got really defensive. I was like, all I do is golden key. But then I realized, no, you, enter, you entertain the fear for however many minutes and then you catch yourself and then you golden key. Nothing was happening immediately. Yeah, and so we'll have to get into what it really means to golden key when you're done telling the story, because okay. I, I'm pretty sure a lot of my listeners probably haven't. Well, I know some of them have read Emmett Fox, but how many of us have actually practiced Emmett Fox and this golden king. And like, he also did like the seven day mental diet and, and those type of things. But how many of us really, when we're in the physical and something's really not going our way, how many of us are really going to do this type, this level of spiritual growth that you're sharing about? That's what I'm hearing from you is you were like on your deathbed and, and I walked through this with you. I've known you for a long time and, and I watched you go through this and, and, and listen to you and, and you disappear for a long time because you couldn't really do anything. And so being in that, in that moment, and then now you're continuing to ask God for help, right? And we use God and source just as like words that understand that prime creator that created us. Um, I tell my listeners, go with what you believe in, Right whatever your understanding is, but to really like get to that place, I can't even imagine where you are in so much pain. And now the message you're getting is, you know, you're not really golden keying. What is, 
like if you were to explain to the audience, the people listening, what it means to golden key. So you have a topic like being in pain and you want the opposite of that, which is to be pain-free. Right. Right. Or you have a topic like I can't really move or do things for myself. And I want to be in a place where I can move and do things for myself. What does golden key really mean? Well, and it could be physical, but it could also just as easily be emotional too. But it, it really means that the moment a thought about that subject bubbles up, that immediately you turn your thoughts to God instead. It's almost like replacing the problem with source. With a solution, with the source energy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Um, and, and I've used this as well, where, and this is the analogy that I'm getting in my head. So what I'm hearing you say with the golden key is there's the topic that you don't want, whether it's like emotional pain or, you know, a, a breakup, even like the, the total split yeah. up and you guys aren't, you know, like you're not talking or whatever it is in that friendship or that partnership or that marriage or it's like the severe physical pain that you are in. And we've been talking a lot about manifestation and what you're manifesting is the opposite of that. To golden key it, the other analogy that I was getting, it's sort of like when you're sitting next to a fireplace and you have on a sweater. And if the ash lands on your sweater, it's going to burn a hole in it. But if you flick it off before it has any time to be there, it doesn't create a hole. And golden key is flicking it off before it creates that hole. So you're going to shift your mind immediately. And it is hard work. You have to actually like literally put effort into, you know, especially when you're in pain, shifting. So we are going to take a quick break. But when we get back, talk to us more about using the golden key on being in this situation. Cause obviously looking at you now, you're not in that type of writhing pain that, that you're sitting up. I know you've been driving your kids around, you know, so like you've been doing things and, and helping people. So when we get back, we're going to talk more about this being human. I mean, you know, being in this human story that you're in and yet knowing that you have the spirit and knowing that you have the spiritual solution. So we will be right back. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sharing Love and Light show with me, Kimberly Barrett. If you're watching this on Facebook Live or YouTube, please feel free to type in a comment. Let me know you were here and don't forget to like and subscribe. So before we get back, to talking to Susan Dyer about this amazing experience. I wanted to let you know how you can reach me. You can reach me through my website, sharingloveandlightshow.com. If you want to reach Susan Dyer, you can visit her website, susandyer.com. And I'm currently offering 20% off coaching, readings, healings, and blue star energy activations to all my Sharing Love and Light Show listeners. When you go on to sign up, for a session, use the code 20%20PERCENT. So we're coming back with Susan. And Susan is talking about being human <laughs> and at the same time knowing that she's spiritual and yet having this. I mean, I can't even imagine when you went through this and I was on the, the receiving end of it, just can't even imagine what you went through because we did almost lose you at that time. And the wonderful thing about you is you already knew you were spirit and you had some tools behind you. And then here you are using the golden key. So tell us more about this experience with your, you know, you're writhing in pain. And now Julie Garland comes in and says, honey, you need to like really golden key it. Right. Yes. Um, Well, it only took me a couple of minutes to realize, of course, 
she was correct. Uh, but the thing I most want to convey is that was two weeks out from 60 days. Uh, and I began Golden King literally, literally nonstop. If I was awake, I was mentally over and over Golden King. Um, and even so, and I had never worked spiritually that hard at anything before in my life. Um, even so, with all that said, I continued getting worse and worse and worse. And with, I remember thinking I was a week out and I thought, well, God, you're going to be pulling an elephant out of my, you know what, because I, I'm almost gone, you know? It's like, don't quit two seconds before the miracle happens. And, and just the tenacity to like, keep going and keep practicing. I think that's where a lot of us fall short is we quit before the miracle and yet you didn't give up. I didn't give up, but that's also why I asked how long, you know, I, I needed to, I needed to know, you know, the end was in sight. And with that knowledge, that was enough to keep me going. And, um, Four, with four days to spare, um, you know, like I said, at this point, my parents thought I was going to die too. Um, but with four days to spare, I simply recovered. Period. It was just like, you know, that, that miraculous, like you, you went on a, on a upswing and started getting better. Yeah. You know, and you continued to golden key even after that. That's the other thing is we need to maintain and stay in that belief, that hundred percent belief that if I'm going to ask for a miracle, I have to actually look for it. Yeah. And the other thing I, I want to say is you guys know, you know, uh, Four out of the six weeks, I was golden keying really crappily. And then, um, you know, for about a week and a half, you know, I, I was golden keying as, um, you know, as fervently as possible. But the most important takeaway here, in my point of view, is that you do not need, nor does anyone expect you to be perfect. And I remember we talked about this often that I kept saying things like, you know, you don't have to strive so hard and you don't have to be perfect about it. Right. And yet we put that, that perfectionism on our, on ourselves often. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what you took away from a lot of this one is if you golden key, the miracles will happen. And that's a testimony to your story that you were like on your deathbed, no, you know, and you golden keyed and ended up, you know, just kept shifting your consciousness to a God of your understanding. And, you know, for me, that's like, it needs to be a God of my understanding that loves me that wants me to get better, that's infinite, that's powerful, that, you know, can perform these miracles. So getting to that place, which I know you had a journey, you know, prior to this, just getting to that place, knowing that there's, you know, a, a spirit that you can tap into. And then really using that golden key and shifting it and then coming out of it, knowing, you know, I didn't do that perfectly. I need to let all these, you know, and I know you work with a lot of women because you do have a story of having been through, you know, different abuse and, you know, really tough marriage and, and things like that. And single mom, right. You know, taking care of kids that you work with a lot of women from your direct experience, being able to help them and, and to carry through that, like, you don't have to be perfect. 
how has this experience helped you with helping the divining women? I would say, um, I would say that the thing that's helped me the most was actually a clairvoyant vision source gave me after the fact. Um, I realized, I guess, I guess you could say, I realized, wait, why did it take 60 days? You know, it, it, it's not, it doesn't take source 60 days. So what's <laughs> that all? What, what's, what, why 60 days? And, um, the answer was just absolutely amazing. Um, source showed me a person that had been in a car accident and the car was tightly, was so tightly wrapped around them that they required the jaws of life to cut them out. And the comparison that Source was making was when we are in that much fear because we are so powerful, it's as if we're saying to all the universe, I got this. I don't need any help. I got this. And that has changed me forever because I, I never even conceded to the fact that it could be, you know, that I could be powerful enough with my fear or whatever negative emotion it was, that I could be powerful enough that, you know, due to free will, I'd be causing the equivalent of everybody backing off and letting me handle it. And that has really changed the way I see things. Yeah, so I am I need to make sure I'm understanding you correctly that you had been really, really self-reliant rather than God-reliant for a long time. And I love what you're saying because I study manifestation and people talk about that and, and that understanding spiritually of how powerful we are as human beings with our thoughts and our words and those type of things, that it was almost like, you know, we created this massive car wreck that we were like stuck in and it was going to take some time for your mind to unstuck yourself out of it. But I absolutely love this idea. What I'm hearing from you is this like 100% responsibility for myself that I'm going to take 100% responsibility and I'm going to take these actions so that I can shift this situation. Yeah. And a lot of times we get caught in that victim consciousness and it's hard to, to get there, right? For sure. Yes. Yeah. So when we come back from our break, I, I'm going to want to talk about that more, but before we go on break, tell me a little bit more about sort of like the takeaway lessons right now from this story that you offer to the women that you talk to. I often pass along the message that by your own fear, or by your own neg negativity, you have the power to squeeze out source and your spiritual team. Yeah, so like it's it's not there anymore that, that we're like completely in that. We've been talking about those levels of consciousness and that we get in that fear consciousness and that victim consciousness, and then the, the spirit is no longer there. And so we're not getting any help and, you know, that, that we could use versus being up in these higher consciousnesses that we're going to where we're sovereign human beings. And yet we have free will. We can actually ask and receive 
which is what we've talking about a lot is that I can actually put words to set intention for what I want and actually receive it. And I can't do that if I'm in all this fear. And I think fear is, is that culprit that we talk about. And, and I would love to expand on that more when we get back from our break is to talk about when you're working with women, helping them with that consciousness around shifting from fear to love, from fear to knowing that you have the spirit that you can tap into. You're amazing. <laughs> Thank you. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sharing Love and Light Show with me, Kimberly Barrett. Um, as I tell you guys often, if you're watching this on Facebook Live or YouTube, please feel free to type in a comment. Let me know you were here. And also don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. Before we get back to talking to Susan about you know being so human and at the same time knowing that we're spirit and how do you navigate that human stuff? and, you know, be a, a spiritual being. Um, I want to let you know how you can reach us. You can reach Susan Dyer through her website, susandyer.com. You can reach me through my website, sharingloveandlightshow.com. I'm also currently offering 20% off coaching readings, healings, and blue star energy activations to all of my sharing love and light show listeners, because I just absolutely love so many of you, I know a lot of you out there, let me know that you listen and, and that you really love the guests that we have, the topics that we talk about. Um, feel free also to let me know if there are certain topics that you would like to hear us talk about. Um, when you're going to get the 20% off, use the code 20%, P-E-R-C-E-N-T. So we're going to come back to Susan. And we were just <laughs> chatting because we've known each other a long time in between about how, you know, each of us, and I think this is that her helping all these women, you know, I'm currently going through something where it's so easy to fall either victim or into that, that fear. And, you know, we're talking about doing these like spiritual growth things that, that are really <laughs> not very easy so Susan, if you want to talk more about that, I know that right now for me, if you were helping me, I would be like, I have this thing and it looks like it's not going to happen. And I've already bypassed my mark of when like it needed to happen and I need to stay in that golden key. And yet what I find myself doing is checking and relooking and seeing and, you know, kind of the worrying is there. What advice would you give? How would you help in that, in that area? I would say to you that golden keying is one of the hardest spiritual activities that, that I've ever done. And so the best you can do is the best you can do. And that's all you can do. And that's plenty. So and basically just remembering to practice it, what helped you remember to do the golden keying? Any, any things in there when you were in that pain and you needed to remember to use that golden key? No, I was in such a state that I needed no reminders. Um, but in the past, for example, like years and years ago, uh, when I used to do this practice, I would write a little G on my thumb, like on my thumb knuckle. Like, so, no, you know, nobody would really know. Oh, a little G on your thumb to remind you to golden key. Yes. And no one would know what it is and no, no one would really notice it. But, you know, uh, you look down at your thumbs, you know, a million times a day. So, that to me is like, that's, that matches and it boxes practicality, if that makes sense. Like he is that practical. And actually your metaphor about sitting next to a fire 
um, Emmett Fox has a campfire metaphor too. Same thing where, you know, if an ember falls onto your sleeve and it's not flicked off right away, it burns down to the skin. But if you flick it off right away, there's no problem. But that doesn't mean easy. It and means that you're going to have to put the effort into it, right? Like actually in each moment. And I talk about that where, you know, people are like, I have all this worrying and how do I stop worrying? And I'm like, well, it, it's really a practice. You have to practice it. And, and I love what you said and not be perfect at it. Here we are spiritual beings. We know that we are infinite, unlimited energy projecting out into this infinite, unlimited environment, right? And yet at the same time, I'm living this like human experience. I am experiencing life. And I, some of that subconscious programming in my mind is going to come up whether I want it to or not. And it's just when I remember practice it, it's practicing it on purpose so often that it becomes habit to practice it. And it sounds like you practice the golden key in the past that you had used the golden key on other things so that when you got in this situation where it was that bad, you could access that. It's sort of like doing mindfulness meditation. If you practice it enough, then you can access that mindfulness, that paying attention on purpose without judgment, being in that witnesser kind of state without yeah. too much effort because you've practiced it enough that you can find that in you. So that's the other thing you probably offer is, you know, really practice, right? Yeah. Anything that you practice on a daily basis is going to be all the more accessible to you in a state of emergency. The more you do something, the more innately you'll pick it up when you need to. Um, and, you know, actually the other uh, subject I wanted to bring up with you, because you had asked, like, how do you help the women that you help? Mm -hmm. And I would say that with each woman I help, my goal is to teach them how to fish. And for that to be viable, they need to get to their authentic selves. They're so much going on with, especially with, you know, us women, where we're people pleasing, or we're doing this for, for so-and-so and, and, you know, living life for everybody, but ourselves. And um, there is a huge shift that happens when you carve down to the core of what's authentically you, but that takes work too. That, that takes real. That is the work, right? <laughs> is, yeah. is really let that. And, and tell me if these words match with you is that self-discovery and that being willing to do that, that work to be able to discover who you are and, and take, I, I love that word, taking that hundred percent responsibility. And that's what I'm hearing from you. You remind me of that saying, like, you know, I could give you a fish and have you eat for the day, but instead I want to teach you how to fish so that you can eat for a lifetime, you know, and, and there is like a responsibility on the receiving end. You know, you're not just going to be like, here, let me fix this for you. It's here. Let me be a vessel to help you discover who you are so that you can discover your answers that have been within you the whole time. Yeah, I like to ask leading questions. I like to listen to that person's guides and ask leading questions and have them 
do the work and the reflecting. And there have been so many times where another layer has had to come off for me. And you have to have fearless self-honesty. Oh yeah, we could talk about that for hours, right? So it's starting to peel that onion. And I always think of like the outer layers as being like really difficult to peel. And then when you get deeper, it like makes you cry, right? But, but to have that rigorous self-honesty, it's wonderful to have that other person there, especially someone that's intuitive, who's guiding you and able to kind of see and guide you toward those truths. Yeah. And actually the first time um, I ever channeled, it was with my own higher self. And uh, you guys you don't know me, but I, I've had really ludicrous, insane things happen in my life. Um, it's just, it's, it's just been like one thing after another. And, um, and I guess, um, when I was channeling, I didn't, I didn't know if I was channeling. Um, but because I was, you know, totally awake and not in trance and rocking and everything. But um, I, you know, I, I understood later it was my higher self speaking. And she was saying um, that you are meant to hold all those experiences. So please stop running from them. But picture a massive, huge, still lake carrying those experiences calmly and with dignity so that when you go to help another woman, no matter what she's been through, you can relate. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. So um, we are going to take a short break. And when we get back, we'll wrap up what we've been talking about. Susan, you are so amazing. I have been on the receiving end of receiving, um, you know, messages from you and, and help in my own life. I, I love to bring on people that have been, a, you know, just a huge impact on me and share them with my listeners so when we get back, we'll talk more about our topic of, you know, this thing about being human and having these human experiences, and at the same time, knowing that you're also a spiritual being. So we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Sharing Love and Light show. I am your host, Kimberly Barrett. And I am interviewing Susan Dyer, and she is a fabulous, intuitive, clairvoyant coach and writer, um, helper of women. So I wanted to let you know, um, if you are watching this on Facebook Live or YouTube, to please feel free to type in a comment. Let me know that you are here, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Before we get back to talking to Susan, I want to let you know how you can reach her you can reach her through her website, susandyer.com, and how you can reach me, which is through my website, sharingloveandlightshow.com. Make sure you put the show on there or you'll get someone else. <laughs> if you want to um, reach out to us and, and get help, you can certainly do that. I'm currently offering 20% offering off my coaching readings, healings, and blue star energy activations to all my sharing love and light show listeners. Just use the code 20% 20PERCENT. I am loving talking to Susan right now, and I'm just feeling really intuitive around there is <laughs> something wanting to come through with messages. So what I'm going to do in this last segment is just turn it over to Susan as far as 
you know, what do your guides want to tell us about this topic? Um, well, the first, the first being who um, comes through is Maya Angelou, who is a writer. Um, and I remember the first time I met her, I fangirled out and I couldn't even speak. It was, it was, it was truly embarrassing. Um, but she wants me to repeat what she had said to me um, in a form room channeling. And I had been talking and trying to describe what it clairvoyantly what it clairvoyantly looks like around each and every one of us there are energy ley lines waving all around us and kind of like meatballs in this soup um, are your guides and i had been saying if you swung your arm you'd knock over 10 of them. And uh, my Angelou came in to correct me and said, if you, if you turn your head, you'd knock us over by your nose alone. And she is saying for all of you who are not clairvoyant, you must understand that you are never alone. There is always a celestial team surrounding you. No matter if you can sense them or not, no matter if you're in a good spot or a negative spot. Your spiritual team never leaves. It's true, sometimes they rotate out, but there is a core spiritual team that is with you for this lifetime. And they love you and they wanna help you all the time. And, and the thing is we have free will, so we have to ask in order to receive the help. Yes, and when we get into fear and all of that, what we were talking about earlier, that is the equivalent of telling them, I don't need your help. Yeah, it's like fear and resentment. It like blocks that, you know, blocks it out. I don't need your help. Yes. I'm going to go down the fear victim path and, and yeah. It basically says to them, back up. I can take care of this. And Emmett Fox is actually coming through and, and he is saying something that I am sure your listeners have heard so many times, but he is saying, I can't say it enough, nor can any one of us. And that is, you are loved just as you are, no matter what. I don't think any of us can hear that enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You are loved just as you are, no matter what. Yeah. And that's, I think, so important because with women in particular, we are harshest with ourselves. Yeah. The inner critic voice and, and you know, yeah we can be pretty hard on ourselves most of the time. And I know you and I have stories like that, that we've shared in together. And then I think now we don't even go there with each other. We really live in a different consciousness when we talk. 
Yeah. But you right. did, you, you helped me a lot today, actually. So <laughs> Using the same, the same thing that you do, which is allowing that intuitive guidance to come in and just guide you to your answers. So it's the same thing that you do for me when I talk to you is you use your intuitive questioning and curiosity and guidance to get me to my answers. So. Yeah. And yeah. I like how you mention uh, curiosity and wonderment. Um, imagination, um, those three characteristics uh, intrinsically align you with source. Yeah, that beautiful love energy. Yeah, so we are going to be wrapping it up soon. We have about three minutes. Um, can you maybe like share some takeaways that you know, you would like to share with people and then we'll get things wrapped up? Sure. Um, I think the biggest one is that we are expected to be perfectly imperfect. I love that. You and I are in the perfectly imperfect fan club. <laughs> yeah. We live our yeah. lives perfectly imperfect. I love it. That's like the biggest one to take away, right? Yes. And then sure. the one that Emmett Fox just said, if you want to say that one again, slam that home. Oh, gosh, um, it's gone. I don't know. I just, I have no <laughs> idea what it's <laughs> I love when we channel because it comes through and then, but I heard it and I know that the audience heard it is that you are loved no matter what. Ah, okay. You are, yeah. You are loved no matter what. And that goes for everybody. Uh, there's, there is a, a lack of understanding between humans of unconditionality. Yeah, that, that can be another topic for us one day to come on the radio and, and talk about, I mean, it is sharing love and light and to talk about how can we as humans having this human experience, right? We are spirit having human experience and how can we, you know, do this unconditional love thing. And, and I can hear people in the background, like, and not be doormats and not, you know, those type of things. Like, how can we live in that higher vibration? Susan, thank you so much for coming on, sharing your wisdom, your channeling, your amazing story with us. Um, I want to remind my listeners, love is not a verb. It is a state of being. It is an energy we tap into and a level of consciousness we can move into. So join me every first and third Tuesday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio for sharing love and light, vibration and consciousness on the planet. Thank you, Susan. Love Thanks. you so much. And thank you to my listeners for listening. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to the Sharing Love and Light Show, Vibration and Consciousness on the Planet, with me, Kimberly Barrett. Remember, love is not a verb, it is a state of mind. You've spent the last hour experiencing love and light and tapping into the quantum energy that already exists in you. But the journey doesn't stop here. Tune in every first and third Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio as we continue exploring the energetic shifts happening in and around us. With love and light, see you next time.